Sons and daughters of God, the remnant, we are children of the Most High. And um, part one of this video is uh, down in the description area. Um, this is part two. So uh, we're talking about um, the mark of the beast and how uh, we are going to say no to it. We're going to refuse it. And um, we're just not going to have any parts of it. Because uh, we're not going to go to hell we're not gonna. We're not going to, um, you know, flunk, flunk out of our final test. You see, we were. We are. We're gonna. We're preparing our minds. We're talking to the Lord every day, twenty four seven. You know, as much as we can, with our minds, with our mouths, we're speaking in tongues, as much as we can. And speaking in tongues is Jesus talking actually doing the talking no wonder you can't understand it he doesn't he speaks many you know he has many languages and there's the language of heaven and he's speaking the language of heaven and believe me the unseen world around each and every one of us and it hears him when he's when you speak in tongues and they do what he says that means every unclean spirit is subject and believe me they are, they will run and they will try to get away when the Lord Jesus, when they see the Lord Jesus Christ, his sword coming out of your mouth, because it has flames and it singes them and they fear God. They fear us, but they fear the Lord Jesus Christ. So speak in tongues as much as you can all day long and you'll be speaking in tongues is very, very deep. You're, you're doing a lot of things around the world um, and uh, and you're not in your and you're right where you're at you're in your, your city your town and you are changing things all around the world when you're speaking in tongues you're changing things for your family friends and they're all good because it's like I said it's the Lord Jesus Christ that's doing the praying so you know we're, we're talking about um, um, uh, being a part of um, the two witnesses, it, 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 those guys will—they're coming back. It's Moses and Elijah, and um, we know a little bit about Elijah from from Second Kings, um, and uh, we know a little bit about Moses from you know uh, Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy. So do your research on these guys. If, which team do you think that you're going to be on? Because they're going to be the captains. And we're going to be the soldiers. Now, when they get here, and they're going to be here. I can tell you when, but I, I, I believe it's going to be here in the next 10 years. And a lot of us will still be alive at that time. It doesn't matter if you're sick now, if you're not feeling good now, if you got mental issues now, if you're an alcoholic, you know, if you're on drugs or whatever. If your destiny is to work with these two, God will straighten you out. Or you should want to be straightened out. Don't just expect it to happen. We have to try. We have to press in. We have to read. We have to pray. We have to worship. We have to press into God. We have to become 100% um, Christian. See, there's 30-fold Christians, there's 60-fold Christians, there's 100-fold Christians. And we need to qualify to be able to work with these captains because it's truly going to be an honor. Now, these captains, um, here, you know, here in 2 Kings uh, chapter 1, it says, this is an example of what Elijah did. And this is an example of what we, that are on Elijah's um, team, will be able to do. So, he won't be just doing all the work. We will be working with him and doing these things. Whatever city you live in, I live in Port Angeles, Washington. I'll be able to do these things here because I'm probably going to be on Elijah's team. And if you live in Colorado, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Washington, D.C., Nigeria, Africa, Kenya, Africa, um, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Canada, uh, Europe, 
UK, India, doesn't matter where you're at. They will be able to, Moses and Elijah will be able to communicate with you and give you orders. And they will be in, they will be in Israel. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And this is something to look forward to. This is something to really want to press into God and be a part of you. You really don't want to miss out on this remnant. Because when they come, it is going to be a chance of eternity to work with these guys here on earth. Because it'll never happen again. So get rid of the things out of your life that don't belong there. And you become as close to 100%, 100 fold Christian as you possibly can. Don't settle. Don't be lazy. Press in. Elijah, number 13 of chapter 1 of 2 Kings, it says, And he sent, um, again, a captain and um, of the third 50. So Elijah had done this twice before. So this is the third time this is happening. This is the third captain and his 50. And the third captain and his 50 went, and they came and fell on their knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Now Elijah, following God's uh, will, being inspired by the will of God, which we will be also too, said, Behold, there came fire down from heaven, and burn up the two captains of the former fifties and their fifties, and Therefore, let our life be precious unto thy, uh, in thy sight. And this will happen, and we will be able to see this, these types of things happen. And the angel of the Lord, because there's going to be a lot of supernatural things happening here soon, you know, right in front of our faces. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go, go down uh, with him, and uh, be not afraid. Of him, and um, and he arose and went down uh, with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers uh, to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, it is not uh, because there is no god in Israel. To uh, to inquire of his word. Therefore, thou shalt not come down off of the bed on which thou had gone up, but shall, shalt surely die. So he died, according to the word of the Lord, which um, Elijah had spoken. Now this was Beelzebub. We we all know who Baal is. He's uh, the god of, of uh, his name is Sh Baal is short for Beelzebub. He's the god of uh, child sacrifice. People were sacrificing their children under back way back then, thousands of years ago, and they're just still doing it today. All the abortion and um, many other things. But we but this is but I'm just demonstrating the power that uh, Elijah will have, and he will give to us. The remnant, if you're on his uh, team, should I say, and this is something to work for here. He's one of the two witnesses. Now, I'm not going to turn to Exodus, but, but we all know what happened in Exodus. Now, Moses did 10 things to Egypt and brought Egypt to their knees. He uh, turned water to blood. If you're on your team, Moses, guess what you'll be able to do? Wherever you're at. He bought frogs. You want to talk about billions of frogs. Frogs in the beds. Now, none of, now remember, none of these things happened to the Israelites. They were in the wilderness somewhere in a town in Egypt. They weren't, it's not really a wilderness. It wasn't called the wilderness, but they had fresh water. They, there was no frogs. There was nothing. No sicknesses, no plagues, no nothing. They were just waiting to get out. But Egypt, it's a huge country, was uh, had bloody water, billions of frogs, lice everywhere. 
I mean, on the animals, on the people. And lice are pretty nasty. They, I don't want to talk about how bad they destroy people's skin and dig into them and stuff like that. It's pretty gross. But you're on Team Moses. Possibility you'll be doing that. Flies. Billions of flies. I can't stand flies. Flies in your food. Flies in your face. Flies everywhere. Everywhere you go, just swarms of flies all over the place. So thick you can just, you can't even see across the street. There's so many flies. The livestock, uh, pestilence, that, that was a plague. Sort of like the, the, the plague that they're portraying around the world right now. They had a plague and they killed all of them. Every last one of the, the cows, the, you know, the sheep, all the food, all the livestock, horses, you name it. It was, it was, it was ugly. It was nasty. Boils on the skin. Now, this is not something that we want to do, but if we're ordered by the Lord to command these things, then they, we will be doing hail, fire. I mean, the f fire, the hail had fire attached to it, and it came out of the sky. So when it hit the ground, or if it hit somebody, they not only got hit with a hard rock, but they got hit with a fireball. So, and then there was locust, and there was thick darkness, the thick darkness you could feel and you can't see a thing. And um, so that, those, those are nine of the uh, ten plagues that, that Moses um, uh, commanded. And there'll be more. You see, Moses was more of a, of a pastor. You see. And Elijah... You know, more of a type of a, a prophet, you see. But we have to get ready for these things, you see, because that's going to be a wonderful, wonderful education to, to be able to be able to do those things. You see, but we also have to remember at the end of the two witnesses lives, they were killed. But then they were they, they, they were resurrected and he caught, you could see him, they were caught up into heaven. Just phew, right up into heaven. They got it right off the ground after three and a half days and rose up and <laughs> resurrected up in heaven, raptured, if you want to call it that. So we will probably, it's a good possibility that we would, this, the same fate is going to happen to us after um, they're gone. They're going to come looking for us. <laughs> and um, they're going to get some of us. So, and that's not that, that's not a bad deal at all, because we'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ quick, you know, after it's all said and done, after they do whatever they, whatever they have to do. But just tell the people that are, that are doing it, that Jesus loves them the whole time. And just, you know, just get yourselves ready, prepare your minds, prepare your hearts for, for these events, prepare your yourself for the two witnesses because um, they're on their way. I have no idea when they're going to be here. It's probably going to be in the next decade, I'm guessing. But uh, it's not going to be for, it's not going to, time goes really fast and they'll be here before we know it. Just like the Mark of the Beast will be here before we know it. The Antichrist will be here before we know it. And we're not, we're not going for any of that stuff. We're not going to do it. Some of us will go into the wilderness to be taught and trained, there'll be plenty of food, plenty of fresh water, shelter, heat, air condition if it's too hot, whatever we need, angels cooking us food and stuff like that. It's going to be great. Some of us will be martyred. It doesn't matter. It's, we have jobs to fulfill. We have um, our destinies to fulfill. And, and our destinies are individual. You have an individual destiny. I have an individual destiny. And we will fulfill our destinies. But let's do it with joy. Let's do it with gratification. You know, let's let's look forward to it. Let's not let's not, let's not look forward to it in fear. But with gratitude. To be be able to be chosen to do something like this is, you know, is an honor. It's not a bad thing. It's not a terrible thing. It's actually a great, honorable thing 
to be able to work with the two witnesses, to be able to be martyred, to be able to say no to the mark of the beast and with faith in God, knowing that if you don't have that mark, you can't eat, you can't pay your bills, you can't do this to that. To be able to trust God is an honor. To be able to live in faith is an honor. You say, well, whatever, you, whatever you're going to do, I'm just going to let you do it because, you know, I trust you. And so we all need to get to that point in our lives, every last one of us. So get to that point in your life. Keep talking to God 24-7. He's there. Got angels around you all the time. And, you know, you could be a prophet. You could be a teacher. And there's a, God has thousands and hundreds of thousands of other different types of jobs also too. But it doesn't matter what you're going to be. All we need to do is just keep pressing, keep pushing, keep our hunger for God, keep our thirst up for God. You know, get out of the lazy boy chair and, you know, read the Bible, praise the Lord, you know, give everything you got to him. You know, turn off the bad distractions and get the sin of our sin out of our lives to, as much as we can and to become the hundred before Christians. That's the goal. See, that's what God is looking at. Even if you don't get to be a hundred fold Christian, at least you tried. You see, he, every, he, he, the Lord sees every bit of effort and there's a, he has a lot of grace. And when the time comes, you might be shocked that you'll be working with the two witnesses. And then you're going to, it's going to be so wonderful. All the, all these wonderful privileges and power that you'll have and just stay humble. Don't be all proud and say, yeah, I'm going to work with the two witnesses. I'm going to work with Moses. I'm going to work. No, that you don't go out, go out like that. It's a, it's a humility thing. You don't, you gotta, you gotta stay down. You gotta stay humble. You gotta stay learned. And, um, it's, it's a secret thing. You know, it's something that between you and God you say, God, what do I need to do? What do I need to work on? Can you help me get there? Cause I, this is something that I want to do. Tell God you want to do it. And then be sincere because if you, after you tell him you want to do it, he's going to help you do it. And it's going to be work. Being a hundredfold Christian takes an entire a lot of work. So, uh, Jeremiah seven, uh, chapter uh, seventeen, verses seven and eight. Ready? Yes. Blessed man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope is in God. For he shall be as a tree planted by waters, and that the spitteth roots, and shall not cease when he cometh. But her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of the drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for dying on the cross for us. Lord, we love you. Lord, we all live in repentance, and we thank you for forgiving us of everything we've done wrong. Help us to become cleaner and cleaner every day and more pure every day father we thank you that we are blessed we are you said blessed is the man that trusteth in the lord we all want to trust in you more we need to trust in you more every single day father so help us in whose hope is in the lord and lord we have a lot of hope in you and help our hope grow also into with you lord for she he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that's who we are and that's who we want to be. Our waters are praise. You created us to worship you. Praise and worship. Our waters are your Bible, your word. Help us to read it. Help us to praise you. Help us to worship you. Help us to use all the tools, Lord Jesus, of your waters, of speaking in tongues and praying in tongues as much as we possibly can. Fasting, praying, Lord Jesus, the waters. Trees planted by waters that spread out of her roots. We want our roots to grow, grow deep into the water, Lord Jesus, and to get as much of that fresh, beautiful, living water as we possibly can into our trees. 
roots by the river, who planted by the river of living water and shall not see when the heat cometh. Things around us will be drying up, but not us. We'll be growing. We'll be growing with you, Lord, with prayer, with fasting, with speaking in tongues, with worship, with reading your Bible. But our leaf, leaf shall be green because of these things. We'll be fresh. We'll be bearing much fruit while other things around us will be dying and, and, and drying up. We won't be. And shall not be careful in the year of drought because we're planted in the rivers by, li by the river of living water, Lord Jesus. And we're being constantly fed. We're feeding ourselves. We're using our self-discipline to become more and more stronger and stronger and grow and grow in you each and every day. And neither shall cease from yielding fruit. And that's what we want to do. Let thousands of souls be saved in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because of us. In Jesus' name, mighty name of Jesus Christ, we love you, we honor you, we praise you forever and ever. Save every single soul in this world, Lord Jesus. Feed, shelter, and give fresh water to everyone who needs it today. Let everybody in this world know that you love them very, very much. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, save all of our family members. Amen. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Um, leave a comment if you like. Yes, definitely like the, the video if you like to. You know, we need all the likes we can get. Every just hit the thumbs up down below and just do that right now. It helps spread the word. And um, share, share the videos also too. And check out part one. It's down in the description area. And check out the video, the two witnesses down by uh, Sadhu Sundar Sevaraj also too. It's a very good video. It explains about Moses and Elijah. Have a great day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.